Reverend Chuck White from the Open Christian Academy and from Spring Arbor University. And I would like to talk with you today about using God's weapons to defend Ukraine. God has provided weapons for us. They are not the physical weapons of the rest of the world, but they are the spiritual weapons that God provides. Paul talks about these weapons in 2 Corinthians 10 when he says the weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. And as we talk about these weapons, I want to tell you a story. It's a story from the Bible. It's in 2 Chronicles 20. It's a story of how the kingdom of Judah and its capital city of Jerusalem was being attacked. It's being attacked by two neighboring, actually three neighboring countries, people from Moab, people from Ammon, and people from Mount Seir. And they were massing to attack Jerusalem. King Jehoshaphat was the ruler, and he realized that his resources were not enough to defend his country or to defend his city. And so he went to the Lord and he cried to the Lord. And the Lord spoke through a prophet and told him that he would not have to fight this battle, but that he would have to stand and go to go out actually, to mobilize the army and to begin to go out. And as they were going out, that the Lord would defeat the enemies. King Jehoshaphat believed God. And so the next morning he readied the army, but he put the singers in front. And as they marched out, they marched out singing, praising the Lord. And as they marched out singing and praising the Lord, the enemies began to fight each other until they were destroyed and Jerusalem was saved and God won the victory. God won the victory as the people were singing. And so I would like to talk with you today about singing as one of God's weapons that he uses to defeat enemies. Now, sometimes God uses singing in a miraculous way, as he did in 2 Chronicles. But other times he uses singing in a more natural way, he uses singing in the normal human way that brings people together. And I would like to talk with you about that. You know from history that there has been other music that has led to victories. You think, for instance, about the famous song, The Battle Hymn of the Republic in the American Civil War. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Or you think about how the French conquered most of Europe singing the Marseillaise. Or how Finland united together and opposed the Russians as they, uh, as the tone, as the, the symphonic poem, Finlandia, was written by Sibelius. So those are some famous times where singing worked together to unite people, singing and or music, united people together and enabled them to win military victories. I would like to show you how God can use singing, however, to win non-military victories to win victories that don't involve killing people. And I'd like to first of all talk with you about the American Civil Rights Movement. And the American Civil Rights Movement was fueled by singing. Against the solid resistance of city officials, the Albany movement found strength in mass meetings and song. So most, most of the, the work, work that, that was done, done in terms of 
taking, taking care of movement, movement business had, had to do with nurturing, nurturing the people who had come. come. And, and there would be two or three people who would talk, but basically song was the bed of everything. So what happened in this is that as the black people were mobilizing and organizing to resist the evil that was in, in the laws of the United States, they sang. And in the Albany movement in, in Alabama and also in, in the Montgomery, Alab and actually and in the Montgomery bus boycott, they would meet and they would sing for two hours and then the last hour, Dr. Martin Luther King or Roy Abernathy or someone would speak. But they would sing and you heard them singing, I ain't gonna let Judge or Sheriff Pritchard turn me around. I'm gonna keep marching. And then they sang, we will go to jail because they knew that they would be put in jail. And they sang, we will, we, uh, we will go to jail to the tune of we shall overcome. And at other times they would sing, We Shall Overcome as the theme song, but then they would adopt that tune to the special circumstances. So it gave people the courage to keep marching and it gave the per people courage even to go to jail. So the American Civil Rights Movement was fueled by singing. Then I wanna talk with you about the singing revolution, the singing revolution that freed Estonia from the Russians. And you can see more about this if you Google the singing, revela singing revolution to see the rest of the story. Two months later, a, a summer, summer celebration, celebration concert, concert in the capital city of Tallinn erupted into a spontaneous declaration of hope. There was so, so many people. The square was full of people. And all, uh, all people was very, very happy. Siin vanalin päevade lõpul laulisid Ivo Linna neid Matiisen isama laule. Partei ja võimud kartsid seda vanalinna päevade lõppu, kuna oli teada, et kogu need päevad juhutis tähemd rahvast üles. Ivo Linna ütles, et, et siin meil ei lubat rohkem esineda, näeme nüüd kõik laulu välja, kuna laulame seal edas. Siis juba laulukaare ette hakkas rahvast kogunema, nii et lõpuks võis meid olla ka üks sada tuhat seal. So we went there with the friends and it was great to see that all the strangers, they were just singing like one man and we were hand, hand in hand in hand and it was great. It's still that chicken's <laughs> In Estonia, they had a tradition of a singing festival. And even under the communist rule, the communists tried to control it, but they would the one day spontaneously at the end of the concert, the end of the singing time, the Estonians began to sing in Estonia their national song and the, the Russians couldn't keep them from doing it. And it was, a, it was a cry of civil disobedience and of freedom. And singing was a really important part of the revolution of getting rid of the Russians. And so the question I have for you is what can you do? How can you use God's weapon of singing both inside and outside the church to free your land from the Russians? What can you do in your church and in your community to free Ukraine? Because singing unites people. When they sing together, 
They have a sense of common purpose and a sense of unity. Singing also teaches ideas. It puts, it reminds you of things, even if it's just a little jingle. I remember there was an anti-communist jingle that went in the United States. It said, you'll wonder where your father went when he criticized the government. And the idea is just, it's just a, a little snatch of song like that. But it said that under communism, you don't have the freedom to speak out against the government. Now, whether it's just a little song like that, or whether it's a, a whole symphony, or whether it's a theme song or a national anthem, singing teaches ideas and reminds people of the truth. But then teaching, singing stirs your emotions. Singing not only works on your head, it works on your heart. It gives people the courage to keep on marching. It gives people the courage to go to jail. It gives people the courage to stand up, to be together. And it's God's gift, whether it is miraculously given, like it was with Jehoshaphat, or whether it's just the natural ability, the natural way things work, the way God has built people, that singing unites them, it teaches ideas, it stirs their emotions. So think about it. What can you do? Can you, can you organize singing events? Could you put together a flash mob? Could you write new songs? Could you use Ukrainian patriotic songs? How does God want you to use this weapon to free your country? Lord Jesus, will you help the people of Ukraine? Will you, through your Holy Spirit, give them new songs, give them ways to use their old songs, to unite them, to make them one in spirit, to resist the Russians and to free their country? We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.